Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. The movie starts with a man named Carlitos Pius, who states that he has not been able to forget what happened to him 20 years ago. As he recalls, the scene goes back to 20 years ago. The date is October 13, 1972. We see photographs of Stella Mari's college's old Christians rugby team. Carlitos points out several members of the team, as he reflects on the accident. They are on their way to Chile for their rugby match. Their flight is going over the Andes, which is the largest range of mountains in the world. The raucous rugby players, and a few of their relatives and friends are eagerly looking forward to an upcoming match in Chile. This is when they start to experience turbulence. The plane starts to get out of control, the pilots do not know what to do, the only thing they know is that they are about to crash. This is when the right wing of the plane crashes into a cliff, and the wings and tail are separated from the fuselage, which slides down a mountain slope, before coming to a stop. In the meantime, some of the passengers fall out of the plane due to the air pressure. They are not able to survive the crash as they land in the snowy mountains. Their plane crashed on the mountain where you see nothing but snow. Before it crashes, it slides down, and when it comes to a halt, getting crushed into a giant boulder, a lot of people in the plane get injured. The situation right away becomes chaotic. By now, six passengers and one flight attendant have ejected from the plane, and are dead. The people who are in better condition, start to check on the injured ones, and they try to help them in any way they can. One of the pilots is already dead, and the other is badly injured. Antonio, the team captain, coordinates efforts to help the injured. Roberto Canessa and Gustavo Zerbino, both medical students, aid the injured. Antonio and Roberto right away go to the other pilot, who is taking his last few breaths. Both boys try to contact him through the pilot's radio to call for help. As they try to do that, they learn that the batteries are dead. The other pilot also dies. By now, another six passengers have died, including both pilots and Nando's mother, Eugenia. Nando, who sustained a head injury, falls into a coma, and his sister Susanna has suffered harsh internal injuries. The other survivors now start to think, the rescue team will be there for them in the morning, as the night is falling, and at night, no one is going to be able to come there, and help them get out of there. Roberto tells everyone to use the seat covers as blankets in this cold. The survivors go inside the fuselage, and curl up beside one another to stay warm. Antonio, Roy Harley, and Rafael Cano plug the gaping hole at the end of the fuselage with luggage, to keep out the wind. Things get really bad at night due to the cold, but they manage to survive through the night. One of the crew members who is still alive is asked if they have any flare guns, so that they could fire it to signal their location, for the people who might come looking for them. Much to their dismay, there is no flare gun. Two passengers die overnight. In the morning, they bring out the dead bodies, and as they lay them down in the snow, Carlitos apologizes to one dead woman, as he yelled at her last night. Carlitos gets emotional as he tells the story of the dead. He adds that they were his own people, who were with them less than 24 hours ago, and now they are gone forever. With nothing to hunt or gather on the mountain to eat, one of the passengers finds some chocolates. Antonio declares they will use rationing, when they find a tin of chocolates and a case of wine. It is not a lot, but we see that they have a lot of cigarettes. They go with the rationing, as they are aware of the possibility that they might have to stay there for days. This is when they hear a helicopter approaching, and everyone starts to celebrate, thinking that the rescue team is there to save them, but to their dismay, it is too cloudy out there, so the people in the helicopter fail to spot them. They themselves are not able to see the helicopter either, they just hear it passing by. The night falls again, and they have to spend another night. The next morning, the sun is out, and we see that most of them are just being casual, they are sitting around smoking, as they are sure that they will be rescued soon enough. Now, they are running out of water to drink, so they try to melt some snow with the help of sunlight. On the other hand, Nando regains consciousness. After learning of his mother's death, Nando watches over Susanna vigilantly. Knowing she will die of her injuries within a few days, he vows to set off on foot, and find a way out of the mountains. They then see another helicopter flying right over their heads. This time, they are more than sure that they have been spotted, and are to be rescued now, but the helicopter leaves just like that. Thinking that they will be rescued the next day, as that helicopter might have gone to get more help to return in the morning. Expecting to be rescued the next day, everyone except Javier, his wife Liliana, and Antonio eat the remaining chocolates. The next day, they wake up and sit outside, waiting for the rescue team to arrive, but no one comes to their rescue. Everyone starts to feel hungry as well. Now Antonio brings out the box of chocolates, and when he opens it, there are no chocolates, as they ate them all, thinking that they are going to be rescued in the morning. 
Antonio gets pissed off, and they start arguing. They now have nothing else to feed themselves, and have no plan other than going on a mountain, where the tail of the plane crashed. If they manage to get there, they can take the batteries, and use the radio to call for help. Five people then volunteer to go to the crash tail. On their way, one of them nearly falls off a cliff into the ditch, but the other four manage to hold him up and save his life. They now understand that they should not go any further, because the night is about to fall, and they are in brutal cold. The nights are long in this weather, while the days tend to be very short. So they get back to the crashed plane, where everyone is waiting for them. When Carlitos reminds everyone that they need food, Nando suggests eating the flesh of the pilots, to give him the strength to survive the journey to find help. Susanna on the other hand dies from her injuries. The survivors listen to a radio for word of their rescue, but are devastated to hear the search called off after nine days, as they are presumed dead. All of them have now lost hope, Nando is the most heartbroken of them all, as he has lost both his mother and sister. It has now been nine days, and the other people have started to lose hope as well. Nando again suggests that if they want to survive, they are going to have to feed on the dead, they have no other choice. Nando says that if they want to get out of there alive, they need all their energy, but no one agrees with him, as they do not want to be called cannibals. The next day, while they are all sitting together, Roberto tells them, that if he dies, they are allowed to feed on his flesh to survive, and he makes them promise that they will do so, or else he is going to haunt them after his death. People have a laugh at this, but they get serious, and everyone now seems to get on board with eating the dead flesh. In the morning, they go out, they have no energy left now, they need food, and they are well aware of the fact, that if they do not get something to eat soon, they are going to be dead. The food is in front of them. They however do not want to cross that line, as one of them says, if they do it, it is going to haunt them for the rest of their lives. Roberto however steps forward, and goes to a dead, cuts a piece of flesh, and eats it. The others look on, and come forward to do the same. As they start to feed on the dead, all of them are heartbroken, and Nando is the most heartbroken of them all, because among those, two are his sister and his mothers. After they have eaten, they start to feel a little energetic yet again, and decide that they are going to look for the crash tail of the plane again. Zerbino Raphael and Juan set off to search, in hopes of finding batteries for the plane's radio to transmit their location. The weather is brutal, and their condition is bad. At night, they sit in a place between the mountains, and try to sleep, but it is really cold out there, so the sleep eludes them. When the morning comes, one of them asks, are we still alive? They start walking again, and get to a place where a lot of stuff from the plane fell. Among pieces of the wreckage, the teammates find additional corpses, and some chocolates as well. They then return to the group, with news that the tail of the plane is likely a little farther away. Later in the week, an avalanche strikes the plane, and fills much of the interior with snow. Eight of the survivors, including Antonio and Liliana are smothered to death by the snow. The remaining 19 survivors are forced to stay inside the plane, when they realize there is a blizzard outside. They decide that they are going to go to get the batteries again, and a second team sets out. They find the crash tail, but the battery is too heavy to be carried there, so they return to the fuselage to get Roy, who is thought to have experience with electrical equipment. They bring him to the tail to see if he could fix the radio. When Roy is unsuccessful, the team decides to return to the fuselage. Federico and Alberto die from their injuries, as does Raphael, leading Nando to convince a reluctant Canessa to search for a way out of the mountains, taking Tintin with them. Two days into the journey, they send Tintin back to the fuselage, so they can appropriate his rations, and continue on their own. After a 12-day trek, the two escape the mountains, and alert the authorities to their companion's location. Two helicopters, one of which has Nando and Canessa on board, appear overhead of the survivors on the mountain, leading the remaining 14 survivors to celebrate their impending rescue. In the present, Carlitos describes how the survivors later return to the site of the crash, and bury the corpses under a pile of stones, marked with a cross. The memorial to the 29 deceased and 16 survivors are shown. The end. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.